Indy, look! Another lost episode, Shorty. Junior, some things are better off lost. Thanks for listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your hosts, Big Anklevich and Rish Outfield. Hey everybody, this is Big Anklevich. Welcome to another episode of the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Just when we thought we were out, they pulled us back in. That's right. Hooah! They wouldn't let us leave. Uh, with me today is Mr. Rish Outfield. Hey there. And uh, we've got a sort of a story type thing for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not a, I mean, I guess it is a story, but it's not a prose story. Rish has this obsession with writing sketches he doesn't like them to be called skits though because that's lame i agree but sketches are rad okay <laughs> and uh, rich has another sketch for us today what is today's a sketch called did you put an e at the beginning of sketch what is a, a today's a sketch called rich i don't think i put an e there but maybe i did i don't know i believe it is called positive Spin. All right. That sounds intriguing. And I defy anyone listening to put one on this episode. <laughs> All right. So Rich's got positive spin for us today. And it's a, it's not a story. That's why I say it's not a story. It's an audio drama. Except for that's not a drama. It's an audio comedy. I don't know what you call it if it's not a drama. Yeah, it's an sketch, as you said. Enjoy the sketch, and we will talk with you more about it on the other side. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Thurgood. I'm just starting here. Hey, new hire. I'm Shanae, your supervisor. Go through here to the office. I'll be in just a minute. Sure, thanks. Thurgood, are you a sports fan? Uh, not, not really. Why? No reason. I'm gonna be... My family just moved here from Little Rock. We're just getting settled in. Hello? <laughs> hey, that reminds me. What do you call Dwayne Johnson's penis? Hello there. Oh, uh, are you the manager? I, I, I'm sorry about that. I, I, I was just a... T- no, no. Employee. It's my first day. Ah, ours too. I'm Daryl. Hey there, Daryl. I'm Thurgood. I'm Rich. Neat. Can I get a loan? What? <laughs> just a joke. A little play on your name. I don't get it. <laughs> nice to meet you, Thurgood. You done this sort of thing before? Marketing? Yeah, a bit. This is marketing? I I thought this was a movie studio. Yeah, Landfill Films Marketing Department. What did you think you were doing? I didn't care. I was just happy to have any job at this point. Times are pretty tough. No, uh, I'm just always out of work. I've pretty much lost every job I've ever had. Well, that, that makes sense. If you didn't, you'd still be there, right? You know, that that's a good attitude. I tell you what, I'm going to do my best not to get fired from this one. Pretty lofty goal there. Well, for me, yeah. Hello, boys. I'm Shanae. I'm head of marketing here at Landfill. We've got several recently completed films, and you three are going to help us with our whole slate of releases for this new fiscal year. Sounds good. I love movies. Sports movies? Well, no. Uh, not unless Fast and the Furious counts. It doesn't. So, we're something of a smaller studio with a lot of lower-budget, lower-profile releases. Some good, some less than good. But it's our policy to always put a quote from a review on the packaging and press pack of all of our films. That's where you come in. Do we get to watch the movies? 
No, Rich. But you're going to read through the reviews and find something we can use to promote it. Something memorable. Something catchy. Something glowing. For example, did any of you see a drop in the bucket? No. 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 It's not bad. The Boston Herald called it eye-opening and timely. So that's what we'll put on all the promotion. Sinead? Yes. Thurgood, wasn't it? Right. What about a movie that gets bad reviews? I repeat, we put a review quote on all of our films. Now, I've split our scheduled motion pictures into three lists for each one of you to cover today. And you're to read through all the reviews and pick, say, two or three concise, encouraging, soundbite-type quotes to put on the back of the DVD. (laughs) Do they even make DVDs anymore? (laughs) What about VHS? (laughs) Of course they make DVDs. What else are they going to put on Walmart shelves? Uh, VHSs? I don't think so, Darren. It's Daryl. Right, right. Now, each of your computers is logged into Review.net, which houses all movie reviews, from the big websites and news shows to the little hometown newspapers. Go through each one, but don't spend too much time reading. What if we find uh, too many usable quotes? You won't. Shorter is usually better. A nostalgic thrill ride is better than It made me feel like an excited little girl again. Uh, Which movie was that? It wasn't one of ours. It was just an example. Look, don't overthink it. Just use your gut instinct, all right? Sure thing. Uh, Are are these movies real? I've never heard of any of them. Yes, they're real. A lot of them were very limited releases. Regional films. Direct to foreign markets. That sort of thing. Okay. I'll be back in half an hour to check on your progress. Do not leave this room, and absolutely no talking about sports. Do you hear me? Yes, sure. You're in the entertainment business now. Have a good time. (laughs) But not too good a time, am I right? I'm not sure what that means, Rich. You can talk among yourselves, get the hang of it. But talk about your work, not about sports. Sounds good. (laughs) Right-o. Uh, what does excretory mean? I don't know. Uh, this adventure film... Eye of the Serpent. Got two and a half stars. Is is that good? I don't know. Do stars count as quotes? Mm, probably only if it's four stars. I, out of ten? I, I think out of four. Or, or maybe five. How about a thumbs up? They used to advertise movies saying, two thumbs up, way up. Uh, do any of yours have two thumbs up? Well, not so far. Then don't worry about it. it. My list has something called Invasion of the Silge Beasts. The hell's a Silge Beast? Hmm, maybe it's foreign. Oh, looks like the director's name is Donovan Silge. Uh, uh, dudes, if I ducked out of here and took a look around, do you think I might run into any movie stars? Um, not likely. I don't recognize any of the actors in these movies. <laughs> Tell me about it. This one on my list actually says it stars that guy from Charles in Charge. Not his name, just that guy from Charles in Charge. But still, there are bound to be some up-and-coming actors walking around the lot. Maybe some hotties just off the boat from Wisconsin? I think they'd take a plane from Wisconsin. Rich, she told us to stay here. Maybe the reason you always get fired is that you don't follow the directions? Nah, it's usually something way worse than that. Let's just concentrate on our work, okay? Okay. Jeez. Have any of you ever heard of The Bitter End? No. No? A.O. Scott called it passable. Is that good? Hmm. I I think it means medium. Not very good, but... Not very bad, either. Huh. What about, uh, middling? Eh, it means passable. Speaking of passable, did either of you see the Houston Rockets play last night? 
late night, double overtime. It was freaking sick. Nah. I'm more of a football guy myself. NFL, though, not college. Really? Who's your team? Well, actually, it used to be Atlanta, but... Uh, are we going to get in trouble for this? <laughs> I like real football myself. What? Like Australian rules or... No, no, I'm talking about soccer. Playing it, watching it, coaching my kid's team. I, I can't get enough of the Soccer's not a real sport. Well, actually, I, I think it's the most popular sport in the world. In some countries, it... Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Are you talking about sports? I, I, I had a flick called Ball Jugglers on my list. It's all about sports. It's Ball Jugglers 4. And it's not about sports, believe me. So, how's it going? Good. Great. It's hard to find good quotes for some of these movies. Shouldn't be hard. That's why we have the computers. And why you have a job. Well, what I mean is, some reviews are... Like Clunge, for instance. It's got a 2 on Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes is rigged. We don't value them here. I'm just saying, the reviews are all bad. Read me one of them. Okay. Uh, Lisa Schwartzbaum wrote, Clunge has the makings of a fine thriller, if handled by competent filmmakers. But instead, it's a tepid, joyless journey through the worst group of characters ever gathered. See, there you go. Clunge has the makings of a fine thriller. Or, better yet, just a fine thriller. Yeah, but that's not what she meant. Who's to say what she meant? Seems like plenty of wiggle room. What's a clunge? <laughs> I think it's slang for a... Rich, read me yours. What movie are you on? Uh, monkey See, Monkey Do. Daily Variety wrote, A comedy without a single laugh. A romance with no tension. A mystery without a solution. A film without a point. See, you'll find negative reviews from time to time, mostly from rival studio plants. But you'll find a way to salvage those if you try. Daryl, what's yours? I recommend you see Eye of the Serpent while heavily medicated or immediately after major surgery. Otherwise, you'll be liable to notice all the parts stolen from other movies and the shoddiest... Stop. Do you see the positive in that? Not really. Who's the reviewer? Uh, Justin Chang. Justin Chang says, I recommend you see Eye of the Serpent. See? It's just that easy. This is the worst review I've ever read. Every bad review is a good review in disguise. <laughs> then this is one heck of a disguise. We're talking about Mission Impossible level, with the rubber masks that make people look like totally... Okay, okay. What's it say? Mm, I'd, I'd rather not tell you. Come now. Read the review. Look what you made me do is the cinematic equivalent of prison rape. Stop right there. Sorry, I, I told you. No, it's fine. Just use cinematic. What? Did he say cinematic or not? Well, yes, the cinematic equivalent of... Well, there you go. Rich, read yours. Uh, this is for something called night sweats. I'm familiar with it. You have to see it twice to catch all the plot holes, flubbed lines, continuity errors, and microphones dipping into shot. Anything else? That's it. How about, you have to see it twice? Uh, I've read through eight of these for Little Devil Helper, and the best I can come up with is the first ten minutes are almost enjoyable before the terrible lead actor shows up to embarrass himself. How is that positive? Uh, almost enjoyable? Do better. Thurgood? The worst film of the year, hands down. Film of the year. About as enjoyable as a Tijuana colonoscopy? Enjoyable. 
It's scary as hell that such a lazy script can be financed in this day and age. How about scary as hell? But it's not a horror movie. Okay, okay. This one's a cinder block. Nothing's a cinder block. I once found a rave review for Muppet Schindler's List. Okay. By the seat of your pants, too, de-pantsed, you'll laugh at the poor set design. You'll cry at the terrible dialogue. You'll happily leave early to demand your money back. But you'll never see it again. All right. You'll laugh, dot, dot, dot. You'll cry, dot, dot, dot. You'll happily, dot, 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 see it again. We can do that? Why don't we just make up the reviews then? Because that would be unethical, Thurgood. You could see it in a sewage treatment plant and it would still stink up the room? That one's a bit of a cha... Ah, just shorten it to see it. A, a monkey see, monkey do is totally obscene from start to finish. Print that as it is. <laughs> this is kind of fun. What did you say? Th that is fun. I, I was afraid I wouldn't enjoy this job. You're fired. I'd tell you to clear out your desk, but we wouldn't assign one until tomorrow. But, uh, but I, I, I didn't... You'll be paid for the morning, if you leave now. Thurgood mentioned sports! Out. I'm sorry about that, guys. Some people just aren't cut out for legitimate film criticism. And how? Well, more marketing for the rest of us. And Thurgood... You'll be happy to know that Landfill Films has just greenlit a sequel to Clunge. All right, welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the sketch. Oh, they're gone. I can I can assure you of that. Oh, they're long gone already? Well, we can always still just hang out, you and I. That'll be fun, right? Well, I hope so. I guess it gives us the opportunity to catch up. Yeah, so so how are you and the kids? And how's the wife? Oh, she's ragging my ass all the time. Hmm. About uh, the bowling team. And I told her that this was the semifinals, and it only happens twice a year. But she seemed to think that that was too much. Two times too many, I'm sure she thought. Yeah, I don't uh, know what's going on with that. Well, that's, that's the way it is, I guess. On the... How are your AA meetings going? What's that? Nothing. <laughs> I was trying to prolong the joke. Oh, I was going to say, I think somebody's still listening. We, we better pretend as, as if they are. I, I, I swear I heard someone breathing. I don't know. What was the name of the person that we used to always call like our, our number one fan and... And at one point, announcer man said, that's it. Nigel just turned <laughs> off the show. That's right. Nigel did. Uh, he commented like every show and stuff. But he did turn yeah, off the show. I'm pretty sure Nigel's long gone. Yeah. Yeah. He's He hit the road, Jack, and uh, did not come back no more. Oh, well. No more. So this story uh, or this a sketch has been around yes, for, a, sketch. for a very long time, has it not, Rishalfield? It indeed has. We recorded this over a year ago, about April of 2018. Even Marshall and Renee have forgotten pitching in on this. Oh, well, you know, that's, that's good. It's like one of those actors, you know, who uh, becomes famous and then something they did when they were hungry and young comes to light, you know, like uh, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> showing his wiener in a in a movie in like you know in 1970 or something like that uh -huh. and a few years later when he's rocky balboa he's just like oh yeah well i'm, uh, I'm not proud of uh, well that's the only wiener i got but uh, I, I don't know it, it was sad to see him squirm where it's just like yeah you just got an oscar for this and now uh... <laughs> so yes first off i want to thank Marshall Latham and Renee Chambliss and you, Big Anklevich, for providing your voices for this sketch because you guys deserve better. <laughs> but it's always cool for the four of us to get together. I mean, I, you and I and Renee got together recently to talk about Infinity War, 
Not Infinity War. What's the other one called? Endgame. Endgame. And you and I and Marshall got together recently to talk about birth defects. I I, I don't know <laughs> what. Well, Mar- Marshall decided that he would journey into birth defects, and uh, we couldn't talk him out of it. But at least we could hold his hand during that particular journey. And so it's cool to get together with these people, even if it's virtually. And I have said, you and I have both said very, very nice things about Renee. I have said a very nice thing about Marshall once. And, uh, <laughs> and anyhow, I wanted to thank them for helping out on this episode. But it would be understandable if they never helped me out again <laughs> after this story. So, so, yeah, the tiny bit of backstory is, you know, I just wrote this as a lark. One time when I was driving up to the cabin by myself, I challenged myself to come up with five ideas for sketches because it was around that time. Well, sorry, (laughs) sketches. It was around that time. We were running them like the, um, what do you call it? The The barbecue barbecue sketches sketches and stuff like that. And and so I came up with a couple. Uh, One of them was like a bunch of, of of like high school bullies get together after school and they have like a, a club where they get together and they read the minutes from the last bully session and, and they like break down and, and, you know, comfort one another uh, when they talk about, you know, <laughs> bullying that didn't go their way. And, and I, 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 in my mind, I was like, Oh, that's really funny. And I, I came up with one that in my head is still the best sketch where it was going to be you and me and like Renee and, and other people. We were all family members that had been gathered together to the funeral of our grandfather or, you know, our great uncle or something, you know, a guy with a lot of money. And the lawyer comes out and he has a videotape, which are, you know, like the last will and testament of our great uncle. And he was like this twisted, sadistic old man. And on his video... He's got like all of these, oh, so you want my money. Uh, I've got some hoops you're going to have to jump through. And this lawyer here is going to make sure that you do them. And it was just like really cruel stuff. And even though he's dead and it's a videotape, he's like laughing on the tape. Like he can see them doing these things. Like he's like, you've always hated your sister, haven't you, Evelyn? Tell her, tell her how you feel. It's like, no, don't beat around the bush. Say it. And it's like, and Jimmy, haven't you always wanted to wallop Jeremy? Do it for $5,000. Get up and strike your brother right now. And, and so, you know, the, the videotape has just like all these twisted, cruel things that this old guy is having like one last kick, imagining his relatives doing these things to get his money. And, and in my mind, I was just like, dude, that is the funniest thing. And then, yes, I came up with this idea of somebody who has to write the blurbs that are on the back of DVD covers. They have to find them and read through all these reviews. And I told you and, and Renee and Marshall this on the night that we recorded it, but I was inspired because I saw kevin smith's last movie yoga hosers i watched it on netflix (laughs) you were the only one and and that was one person too many this movie was awful just like bottom of the barrel terrible and i'm a kevin smith apologist but i don't know if i can be after this i was just shocked it was like a slap to the face how bad the movie was and how unfunny it was. So I went on to Wikipedia to see if I was the only one. And it's got a 23 on Rotten Tomatoes, which is bad, but it's not as bad as I would think. Because I would say that Yoga Hosers is one of the worst movies I've ever seen and easily the worst Kevin Smith movie. And he's made, you know, movies like Cop Out and Tusk. But it's got a 23, and then I was reading through the reviews, and one of them said, and I quote, it's in Variety, Daily Variety, Justin Chang said that the cast shows a bit of spark and chemistry. 
enough that you long to see them in a starring vehicle that doesn't look and feel like an on-screen underwear stain. <laughs> and I thought, maybe that's the worst quote I've ever heard for a movie. And believe me, I know underwear stains. <laughs> but then I thought... You're quite familiar with the stains in underwear. Painfully familiar. <laughs> uh, but then I thought... That quote starts out, you know, that, that you've got a cast with a uh, spark and chemistry. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be nasty if whoever made this film used that quote, but only used the, 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 the positive part before they got to the underwear stain line. And so, yeah, I, I cracked myself up thinking about going through negative reviews and like, to turning them positive, even though they're totally negative reviews, I just thought it would be a funny sketch to imagine people whose jobs it is to do that. And so I sat down on that uh, trip to the cabin and I wrote the sketch. And again, I thought it would be funny. And when the four of us got together and we recorded it, everybody was game. Everybody did the best they could with the material. And... Anyway, I didn't feel like it was funny. <laughs> I edited it together, and I didn't feel like it worked at all. And I told you that, and you said, oh, okay, so what do you want to do? Do you want to just not release it? And that's what I did for a year. <laughs> I didn't release it. But you, we talked about it of, of times when we have recorded stories for, you know, Starship, for some podcasts out there that never used them, and how upset that made us. And I thought, you know, I, I, I owe it to you and, and Marshall and Renee and Justin Chang of Daily Variety to put that sketch out there and maybe we can have a discussion about it. Uh, it's, it's interesting because I have a few stories that I feel the same way about. I worked on them. I wrote them. I finished them. And now they're done. And I'm just like, eh. I don't feel that it, it achieved what I wanted it to achieve. But you put the work into them, you know what I mean? You uh, you spent the, all the hours that it takes to write 5,000 or 7,000, or in my case, 20,000 words. And doing nothing with it feels like a huge defeat or something like that. Like, you, you still got to put it out there. And, you know, in the, in the case of this one, you know, we all, we all performed. I think we did our best. There's funny moments in it. It may not be 100% awesome the whole way through, a rollicking good time. The cast may not have chemistry before it turns into an underwear stain or whatever it was. <laughs> but it's it's got its moments. It's not, it's not all bad. It actually made me remember something that we're going to have to talk about in a minute. Okay, well, it's up to the audience, if anybody's still around, to determine whether it would have been better not to have released it or okay for, for example and maybe you and i haven't talked about that have we ever talked about fox's new mutants movie that was supposed to come out in 2018 um i think we've met, you know talked a little bit about it i'm pretty sure we haven't talked about it on the show well the it was a a production that may have been troubled they put the film together and Fox didn't feel like it was ready to go, and so they brought pe the cast back in to do reshoots. And it was one of those reshoot sessions that's extensive. Extensive enough that it missed its release date, which I want to say was February 2018. And they were going to bump it to the uh, fall of 2018. And so they did all these reshoots, and, and they re-edited it, and... For whatever reason, they decided not to release it in 2018. They said it would come out in 2019, but it's off the schedule now. And now Disney owns Fox. And I wondered, if you are Disney, do you release this movie at all? If it's as bad, if it's as... as uh, it looked bad. And I've had arguments with people that are like, it didn't look that bad. Okay, that's fine. To, you, to each your own. But to me, it looked bad from the trailer. And the point of a trailer 
is to get you excited about the movie so that when it comes out, you'll be like, oh yeah, I will give them my $7.50 or $11.50 or whatever movies cost today. And I didn't feel like that trailer worked. So my question to you or to anybody who would listen is if you're Disney, is releasing New Mutants throwing good money after bad? It's already paid for, but you can't just release a movie. You have to pay to get it out there. You have to advertise. You have to do posters. They call it prints and advertising. And it costs millions and millions and millions of dollars. But if, if the movie is that bad, do you throw the, the good money out after the bad to try and recoup some of your investment? Or do you just chalk it up as a learning experience? And also, you're Disney and you've just acquired all these properties. And hopefully one day you're expecting to introduce the mutants characters into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And will releasing this movie, if it is bad do harm to the potential audience in 2023, you know, that, that would otherwise go see this movie? And these, I guess, are rhetorical questions, but if you want to answer them, I'm curious what your thoughts are. I don't know. I, I mean, I would release it in some fashion, right? I'm sure there's easy ways to release it, uh, like just dump it onto Netflix or, I guess, at this point, Disney... Plus, is that what it's going to be called? Disney Plus, yeah. You know, you can do something like that. Throw it out on DVD. Just probably not even throw it out on DVD. Just a low-cost way of releasing it. When you know it's not going to... See, the thing is that they just acquired the brand of the X-Men. So they want it to be something that's valuable. They want it to be something that they can take the value that it has already and add to it. And it seems to me like all that's going to happen from this movie is it will diminish the value of the brand. You know, when you put things like Fan Four Stick out, then the Fantastic Four brand is diminished. And so it's, it's worth less in the end. You know, they just bought all this stuff and they want it to be worth something. I don't know, and, that, and that's the other thing too. With Disney Plus, I mean, the reason, the main reason, I think that they bought Fox in the first place, is because they wanted content for their streaming channel that they're trying to rival Netflix and Hulu, you know, and, and just overcome all them. And Disney has tons and tons of stuff, but it's all like a certain kind of stuff, you know, they have less stuff than they could have. And they, if they add to the pot with this other stuff that they've gotten from Fox, now they have a ton more stuff that they can throw in there and it'll lure more people to spend the five bucks or 10 bucks or whatever a month it's going to cost to get the Disney plus package. So it seems to me like that's what you do with it. You find a way to put it out there without damaging your brand, I guess. I don't know. Okay. It, it seems evil to not release it in any way whatsoever. You know what I mean? Like to just bury it. And, evil. And it just, it's like taking somebody's money or something. Like, I don't know. Stealing somebody's work. I don't, I don't know how to, how to quite describe what the crime is that's going on there. But something, something bad happens when you refuse to allow it to go out okay well it's interesting that you didn't just go i, I, I don't know man <laughs> which is what i would have said because i i have no idea without having seen the movie i can't say whether it's better that people say i don't know what new mutants are than oh yeah i saw that new mutants movie on disney plus uh they're doing that again i don't know but when you say evil, you're saying, you know, the, that people worked on it. People worked hard. That lots and lots of people spent time and money and effort. And to never be able to see the fruits of their labors uh, is cruel somehow. Yeah. Maybe even unprofessional. At the very least, they got to post it on YouTube. <laughs> And they could keep the link private, but they got to at least let the people who are in the movie be able to watch the final product and sh and show it and share it with their mom. Share it with their moms. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I guess I'm tying this together with 
this sketch. There is a dearth of courage within me to put myself on the line. Uh, as people have heard over 10 years of this show, I don't like to put myself in a position where I might fail, where I might be rejected, where I might be criticized, where I might feel bad. And I felt like that, that was almost guaranteed with this sketch. But framing it in this context, where we're talking about how bad it is, or what do you do with something that didn't come out the way that you expected it to do. Nobody seeks to make a bad movie or to write a bad story. And if they do, well, I, usually it's pretty apparent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Something like The Room <laughs> can only exist when the people making it think that they're doing something good or think that they're, there's a chance that this will work out. You know, Tommy Wiseau claims now that it was always meant to be a comedy. It was always meant to entertain audiences with how uh, nutty it was. Uh, and that's a lie. If you have seen The Room, in, or, or instead of just the three-minute clips on YouTube, you know that this was an actual attempt to make a movie. That's part of why it has its messed up charm. You know what I mean? It's just like this, this, this is a mad person making a movie thinking that this can fly as, as dialogue or special effects or, or scenery or, or whatever. But I think we also learn from our mistakes. I've, I've read interviews or watched people interviewed where the person interviewing them brings up something that they made in the past that was not good or that was not well received. I, I remember an interview with George Clooney where he was talking about Batman and Robin and it made me respect Clooney more after seeing that review where he's just like, I blew it. I, I had the chance to be, you know, the world's most famous superhero and, and, and I made this movie that nobody liked and it's terrible and, and, and we tried our best. I mean, I, there was this dialogue and I did what I could with this dialogue and and it didn't work, and that's on me. Where and I just wanted to say, dude, you did the best you could, but it's not you. Nobody hates Batman and Robin because of you. I always apologize for Batman. <laughs> Let me just say that uh, I actually thought I destroyed the franchise until somebody else brought it back years later and changed it. But you know, I thought at the time this was going to be a very good career move. It wasn't. <laughs> Anyhow, it, just, it made me respect him that he just was able to say that. Even Joel Schumacher has said things about that movie where I think, you know, maybe somebody should give him another chance. <laughs> Not with Batman. I, mean, I probably won't pay to see it, but he's a human being and he recognizes that it's not good. Help me out here. Do you, do you know where I'm coming from? Do you feel me, sir? I can feel you. I, I mean, you do your best, and like I was saying before, I've I've done the same thing, you know, where I sat down and wrote a story, thinking this is gonna be good, and at some point I'm just like, oh, this is not being good, and then I'm, I'm like, oh crap, what am I gonna do with this? I spent all these hours on it, and can I put it out? Can I put it on the show? Is there anything that I can do with it that won't be worse? than doing nothing with it and yeah it's, it's upsetting i guess we can't all always win it's just the way the, the way it goes we're, we're human and sometimes for every spielberg there is a hook <laughs> the old spanish proverb yeah it's the old spanish proverb so you know everybody uh sometimes blows it I don't think, <laughs> by the way, that this is this ske sketch was all that bad. It wasn't as laugh out loud hilarious as sometimes they are, but there was still a lot of charm and a lot of fun in it. You know, the the thing that it reminded me of, and I've actually gone back on your blog and found the post for it. Let's see, it was July second, two thousand eighteen. You did a post 
about these movies that you stumbled upon in the store. A little like standee of a bunch of movies that <laughs> were for sale. And you're like, what the hell? You saw these movies and they they were these... Uh, they looked like legit movies or it's almost legit movies. They looked like ripoffs of legit movies maybe. There was the there was a movie studio and I don't know you probably know the name of them but they The would, Asylum. The Asylum? Or where they would make a movie with the same title and they'd put it out trying to trick people into <laughs> buying it. Uh that may be it. I was going to refer to the ones that made cartoons. They would hurry up and put out a Aladdin and it would come out right about the same time as Aladdin was going on DVD. And you look at it and you're like, this isn't Aladdin. King of the Lions. <laughs> I never watched. Notre Dame's Hunchback. The Legend of Mulan. Yeah, I never watched a single one of them, but I'm sure they were absolute shite. Like even the animation, I'm sure, was probably terrible. But uh, yeah, you know, these movies that you have pictures of on your blog post, <laughs> they're hilarious, first of all. They have people's names up at the top as though they're names that you would know. Like this movie on the first one is called Breakpoint Dawn Infinity. That's <laughs> the title of the movie. And then it's got a woman on the cover. And then it says Natalia Rodriguez is the name at the top and there's another movie called the high five starring stone jones the funny thing is i think i started reading your blog post a year ago and i must have gotten interrupted before i ever got to the no, end of it no you didn't because i never saw the punchline of what this exactly was i added the punchline like four months later when i found out what the punchline was oh you added it Oh, you monster. Because I found those on clearance months later, those movies, and the clearance tag said what they really were. Oh. And I was just like, oh my gosh, really? And I considered, there was one where I considered buying it because it's just so absurd, like the <laughs> cover and all that. And I thought, yeah, it'd just be neat if I had that on the shelf and I could trick people into thinking it's a real movie. But no one would ever see that if I bought it, you know? Right. It's kind of like the uh, Golden Girls t-shirt I was going to get my cousin for Christmas. He would never wear it. He would throw it in the fire. <laughs> and so the whole point of the joke of him getting a Golden Girls t-shirt from me is ruined because he burned it. <laughs> he didn't think it was funny. He thought it was more funny to burn something I had spent money on than to wear it or take a selfie with it or you know and that's yeah the same thing with these they they, they apparently they were these mockbusters or whatever they were they were intended to be gag gifts that you give your dad for father's day and uh, i had missed that <laughs> bit i just i saw a whole display of them at target they are hilarious and it just yeah it made me feel like I had lost my mind. <laughs> the thing about it is, I look at these and it makes me wonder, was this part of your inspiration for this skit? But it couldn't be, right? Because we recorded it before July 2nd yeah. of last year, right? Right. So you actually presciently wrote this sketch before you ran into the inspiration for it. These crack me up because it, it makes me think of all the crap that we see in these movies. You know, you have Ocean Mission, colon, Dark Tide. And it's got <laughs> pictures of like a, a submarine. It looks like a ripoff of uh, Red, October. Red October. And yeah, it's got pictures of some guys in their, their Navy uniforms. And the, the, the tagline is, how deep is too deep? <laughs> and uh they have another one i can't the the one problem is your picture sucks sir just just saying well i never intended <laughs> to make a blog post of it i just i 
took these pictures so that I could like look them up later or whatever and be uh -huh. just like, holy crap, dude. But yeah, like one of them is time. I want to say it might say time caves, time, maybe in another picture you get a better look time at games, it. Time games, is it? And it says the future of the past is now. <laughs> or, oh, this one, if you can't stand the heat, time to die. <laughs> See, you're, this is way funnier than positive spin. The idea that people sat around in a room or a person sat around and came up with these titles and taglines and fake quotes for it. That sounds like a, a, a totally fun job. But you don't say that to Renee. Yeah, being, being the onion writer instead of the landfill marketing department. Yeah. The thing that really starts to make you realize something's up is when you get to the gladiator ripoff that they've done called Blood Oath, colon, Remembrance. And then you see the name above the title and it says his name is Hom Tanks. It's like, okay, this can't be real, can it? But yeah, you have a bunch of... Because it has Hom Tanks Hom in it. <laughs> Tanks is his name. Not Tom Hanks. Hom Tanks. That's when you realize, oh, something, something's up here. But yeah, they have little quotes. Just like the ones you're talking about. Like Blood Oath colon Remembrance has in quotes epic. That's it. Just epic. Could be epic failure of a movie. Or High Five has in quotes wow. That's it. Just wow. You're right. This sounds like the inspiration for this sketch. Like I saw all this stuff and it's like, wow. Well, that could mean anything. Wow, this movie stunk up the room, you know? <laughs> exactly. But... There's a movie called The Evidence and it just says sets the bar for legal thrillers. And bar is italicized just to make it stand out all the worse. And then it claims that Rolling Stone is the magazine that gave you that quote. But uh, it really does feel like the uh, inspiration for the sketch, but it's not. It has nothing to do with it. It's just hilarious that Red Fear, Massive Heat... Uh, had nothing to do with Clunge. What did you... What was, the, what was it called? Was it Clunge? <laughs> ah, I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> the use of the word Clunge in that sketch. They already greenlit Clunge too. You'll be happy to, to hear. But I just immediately think of Splunge from Monty Python. But but yeah, I don't know. I, th I think there's a, a, at the very least, there is a nugget of fun in that sketch that we all got to experience. And it's good that you didn't completely bury it because I still enjoyed it. It was better than having no episode for the last six months, which is about the point what we're, that we're at. And it's also, I discovered, because of this, I discovered that you faked the ending of that blog post. Who stood to gain <laughs> from faking the ending of that blog post? That's right. Key buono. That's the question you need to ask. And when you come up with the answer, you'll know how high this conspiracy goes. <laughs> Do you have anything more you want to say about this show? Well, on my podcast, The, the Rish Outcast, Outcast, Oh, I've talked a couple of times about a conversation that you and I had in the Target parking lot years ago, where you said, uh, you know, I've got a bunch of stories that, are, that I'm not proud of, that I don't think are very good, but I, I'll release them one day, like when I do a collection of short stories, I will include those as like little bonus pieces in the collection uh, not i don't feel like they can stand on their own i'm not going to release them as their own thing but in a collection i yeah I, I will let those go and i remember you saying that and it made an impact on me because around that time i was compiling stories to do a, my very first audio collection and i thought about that it was like well well i've got some stories that I don't think anybody's ever going to read. I'll pass away, and then I won't care anymore, and you can share them all you like. Just don't charge for them, or take credit for them. <laughs> Put them out under a pseudonym. I, I don't know. Is it better for there to be more content, but there's stories that I, 
I hate stories that I know are bad. And I, I think when we had this conversation the last time, you said, well, you never know. Somebody might say, dude, I really liked that story. I'm glad that you put it out there because I thought it was good when I think that it's bad because I'm not the best judge of my own material. That's funny because I was just about to say that to you again. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, cool. Yeah, I, I should have, have asked you, do you remember this conversation? Do you remember what you said when I brought it up? So you, you feel like that's that's the case. Yeah, I think that happens a lot of the time. You think something sucks. Then somebody else reads it and they're like, oh my gosh, I love that. And I think there's even been a few times where I've read some of your stories where you didn't think they were that great. Or you thought, oh yeah, well, the ending, yeah, I don't like the ending. Like, like Space Shit, for example. You had an issue with the ending of it, didn't you? You didn't like the ending or the way it went or something like that? Yeah, basically everybody who experienced this, this, this night forgets that it ever happened. And they all go their, their way forgetting that they encountered, you know, this supernatural thing. But it occurred to me as I, probably after I'd finished the story and I was presenting it to you or to Jeff or to somebody, that it's like, well, the, how does the narrator remember then? And so I put a little bit at the end where the narrator says, Wait, that's crazy. None of this ever happened. I don't know where it was all coming from. I, I must have made this up. The, the people who died, they didn't die that way. So-and-so drowned in his pool and so-and-so went off to Afghanistan and was killed. Or it's just like, yeah, I, I don't know why I told this outlandish story, this, this lie. I apologize for wasting your time. And that's how the story ends. And in my head... I thought, wow, that's clever because the audience is going to realize that these things really did happen, but the aliens have tricked everybody involved. But when I shared that story, people didn't get that at all. And I was just like, oh, okay, so this, this does suck. This ending, I was right the first time. And then I lowered my head and cried. <laughs> but I read that story and I loved it, especially the ending. That was what I loved the most about it. I loved that weirdness where he's just like, wait a minute. And then he's like talking with his friend and his friends saying, no, you, you're crazy. And it was so interesting. It was, it made it so much better. And you didn't like it. You didn't want to put it out. And I, I bugged you forever saying that I was going to do it without your uh, uh, permission. <laughs> Anyways, you know, that kind of stuff happens fairly often. You write something, yeah, I don't think that's my best work. Somebody else reads it, they love it. And it's it's hard to be able to guess what your best stuff is sometimes. And I bet if you were to ask them what their favorite story was that you wrote, for the most part, you'd get a bunch of different answers from the various different people. And so, yeah, it's totally worth it to put things out, even though you don't necessarily think they're the greatest. Because somebody might. Maybe they won't. Maybe your opinion will be mostly right. But there's still probably going to be one or two that think it's worth it. And, heck, you can pad your your <laughs> your collection with a few, uh, a few extra stories that are exclusive. But yeah, I, I do have several stories that I feel that way about. And I figured, yeah, when I put out a collection, I'll just, uh, I'll put these ones in there. They're short. They're bonus. Nobody can complain about having some extra stuff. Okay. Well, I, yeah, the only time will tell what people thought of this. But yeah, it, it, it had, what's the word? It had uh, stagnated or it had, had been shelved for too long. We needed to just get it out there and uh, move on to the next project. And, I mean, maybe that's something that the makers of New Mutants should do, but, but maybe not. I, one last little irritating anecdote for you is I went to a comic convention the other day, and I went to a panel about bad movies that are fun to watch, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And they were... Everybody on the panel was bringing clips from movies 
that are bad, but in an entertaining way. And of course, they had Tommy Wiseau from the room as the image for the panel. But they said, we're not going to show any clips from the room. We're not going to show any clips from Plan 9 from Outer Space. And we're not going to show any clips from Troll 2. And they ended the panel by saying, you know, we said that, but let's go ahead and show that most famous clip from Troll 2 anyway. And they showed the clip, and whether you've seen Troll 2 or not, you've probably seen the clip of, they're eating her, and then they're going to eat me. Oh my god! It's, it's beautiful. And they showed that, and people applauded, <laughs> and then a guy stood up in the audience and said, hey, that's not that bad. And it was the guy who said, they're eating her. They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. Oh, my God! And he came up on the panel. They had invited him ahead of time. Uh, he, he's an actor. And he came up. And for the, the, the last, like, five, six minutes of the panel... Everybody wanted to ask him questions about that production. Uh, Troll 2 was about 1987 or so, so it was about 30 years ago. And he was a young actor, like, you know, a teenager or something like that. And he said something that really bugged me. I mean, it made me feel bad. And, and you don't want to feel bad when Troll 2 is involved. <laughs> but he said, you know, this movie has the reputation of being the worst movie ever made and a lot of the the finger pointing is at me in this movie but I was a young actor just getting started and that haunts me to this day when I go for an audition or I try to get a part they'll be like where do I know you oh my gosh you're the they're eating her and then they're gonna eat me guy from Troll 2 oh oh you're the worst actor who's ever lived and he doesn't get the part. And he's just like, I like that you guys all laugh and that you applauded at me and stuff. But sometimes I wish that I had never made that movie. And I felt really bad that he was still trying to make a go of it as an actor. And this movie is a millstone draped around his neck everywhere he goes. And uh, I guess I just wanted to leave that with you to end this episode on a down note. Because there aren't enough things in life that make you feel bad, are there? <laughs> no, there isn't enough. You work in the news. You have no idea what I'm talking about. We're always trying to find more because we just haven't, we haven't felt bad enough yet. So thanks for giving me a few more. Yeah, thanks for bringing us down. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. I, but uh, let me see if I can spin it. Let me see if I can save. We're, we're in a nosedive, right? Can you make the sound of a, an airplane where the, the engine has gone out and it is going down? Wow. Oh, everyone needs to assume crash positions. Despite that, there was a line of people at the end of that panel that wanted to get pictures with this guy. And my niece was among them. She wasn't even born when Troll 2 came out. And she wanted to get a picture with this guy, who I didn't even know the name of. I still don't know the name of. But there were all these people who were just like, oh my gosh, it's so cool that he's here. This guy is a celebrity. Let's get a picture with him. And that has to feel kind of good, right? Yeah, I would think. Like when teenage girls want to be in a picture with you? I, there's a silver lining somewhere in there. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, he could charge people for getting a picture with the worst <laughs> actor ever. <laughs> and yeah, that's the thing, is if he wanted to come to the next convention and have a little booth and charge 10 bucks a pop to get a picture with him or to get an autograph or whatever... The people might tell him, oh, 10 is not enough. You could easily charge 30 bucks or 40 bucks and people will pay it. That's fame. 
that's success. That 30 bucks spends just the same, whether it's for Schindler's List or the worst movie ever made. Yeah. Are, are we still in a, a dive? Do we need to assume crash <laughs> positions? <laughs> No, I'm okay. I I won't slip my wrists immediately after hitting stop. It'll be like a week or two, probably. Okay. All right. Well, okay. See if you can put some kind of positive spin on this episode. Well, we got a new episode out, which is always uh, a plus because they're fewer and farther between her than I want them to be. And yeah, it's always good to be able to hang out and talk with my best friend and talk with the folks out there in internet land. So there's joy that has been brought to the world because this episode exists. (laughs) Okay. Well, and it was also fun to have a character that Marshall voiced named Thurgood. Yeah. And Shanae. These characters that are very close to who we are. To play a character so unlike myself, who has been fired from every single conceivable job, that was a real stretch for me. So it helped me as an actor to play a character that unlike me. Yeah, it must have been tough. Yeah. (laughs) All right, well, thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you had a good time. I hope you managed to uh, enjoy something. (laughs) on this show we'll be back again eventually with another episode so uh tune in you know about the same time that we did the recording for this sketch that we put on the show here (laughs) i also recorded probably like 30 percent of a story that i wrote called fireflies that um, i meant to be the next episode of the show (laughs) i still have that 30 percent recording And I've been meaning to record the rest of it and edit it and get it going. So I'm going to raise my hand and swear that the next episode will be part one of Fireflies. Starting tomorrow, I'll come home and I will record until maybe it'll take a few days, but I'm going to get the whole dang thing recorded and we're going to put Fireflies out there. And Fireflies, coincidentally, is not one of those stories that I think, eh... I guess I could use it for something. It's actually one that I like. So hopefully that'll mean something. But uh, yeah, you can look forward to that episode coming relatively, hopefully soon. It has been a year since I started. So (laughs) I've got to force myself by promising now. Okay, well, uh, here's a little taste of the next episode. Why did it take you a year to finish recording the story? Why? Um, because I'm the worst. I'm totally No, no, you lazy. don't have to actually answer I the suck. question until the next episode. It's a tease. Oh, this is a tease. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's a good question, Rish. Tune in next time to find out. Well, okay. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. You can always give us a message on Facebook You can give us a positive review on iTunes. You can mail us money. Dirty, damp, foul-smelling money. You can visit us on our various solo podcasts or on YouTube, if I still have a YouTube channel by the time this comes out. And uh, what else? Is there anything else they can do? They can tune their mind into the brainwave channel that I just started. That's going to be good. Um, yes. Yes, very good, Big Anklevich. Best brainwave channel out there. All right, see you next time, folks. I've been Big Anklevich. Yes, Big Anklevich. He is our master. (laughs) One day he will reward us. And I've been Rich Outfield. Goodbye. The claw is our master. The claw chooses who will go and who will stay. You have been chosen. You must go. Stop it. Stop it, you zealots. The Doonstief is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, 
no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. Goodbye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Take two. Yes! Clunge two! Clunge. The squeak wall. That's funny. I didn't catch the little devil helper on the first pass. That's pretty funny. Uh, and I was able to burp on air. So that's fun. I pressed the button. You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine.